Uh oh. Yeah, I was gonna eat that one. Oh fuck. We gotta get. We gotta. Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking knew it. Oh. I don't think there's a delay. Uh, I should mention. I'm using a Dual Shock Four for this PS4 controller. I don't think there's a delay. Sometimes it feels like my inputs don't register as well as they should. But there, um, that's the hit that always gets me. That's a really bad one. The timing's super weird and unlike most Souls games I find. A Silent Demon's weird though. Like, when I, when I fight him Dark Souls 1, he's way faster than I remember and Vanguard is quite similar to that. So yeah, um, you probably saw for that little bit. We died. So that's neat. Um. Okay. You know what? Yeah, after this, I'll chuck in the footage from yesterday of when I beat him. Just so you guys can see that shit. And you can see the rewards you get. <sighs> so yeah, I'll do that after this cutscene. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. This is the Nexus. It holds together the northern land of Boletaria. Thou canst not exit the Nexus, but each of the five arch stones will connect them to another. So welcome to the Nexus. We are stuck here. I'm thinking I'll just show this place off real quick and then I'll slap in the footage of me beating Vanguard. Yeah. So you might notice some similarities if you've played Dark Souls 3. Yep. If you didn't know, this is where they got it from. That's where, uh... Well, technically, Andre lives down there. In the layout from 3. It's, uh... Yeah. There's some very similar layout things going on here. Anyway, you'll recognize this guy from every Souls game. Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero? <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the archstones. Now go. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed volatile. I'm pretty sure he's the same VA as Dark Souls 1. Souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero. Bit of both, I guess. It's all the same. You're just another prisoner of the Nexus. We're welcome here. As long as we keep slashing up demons. <laughs> So he's even more out of it than um, Chris Fallen in Dark Souls 1. Yeah, he's weird. I should also mention, that's good advice, due to this being a, a DualShock 4, I can't rate messages, I can't place messages. Which sucks, because options and share don't do anything right now. Well, everyone should go there first. We kind of have to. I'll get to that in a second. So yeah, that sucks. Um, one thing I'll mention now, speaking of messages. On this server, on UV server, placing certain messages will alter what's known as world tendency. So let's show that off. Because I'm attached to the servers, um, what's going on now is known as pure white tendency. So I'm explaining this to people that have no idea. If you're watching this, I guess you, given the size of my channel, you probably looked at this and went, oh, I know Demon Souls. If you're here for Astral Chain, you probably have no idea. And that's fine. It's a weird system. So each world has its own scale. And um, 
dying as a human and beating bosses and completing other little mini things um, alter what's known as world tendency. If we weren't attached to the servers right now, if we weren't connected rather, we would be known, we would be at what's known as just neutral tendency. Um, beating a boss, as I said, kicks you up one point towards white. Um, dying and killing NPCs, wait no, killing NPCs fucks up your character tendency, which is what's going on in the middle with our weird mannequin dude. Um, so certain events and certain things, certain objects and obstacles in the world will disappear depending on tendency. So right now, because we're on pure white, we can go to some places we're not really meant to immediately. So, placing messages, certain messages, you can check that shit out on that reddit link if I put it in, um, will change the world, you've just got to load in and out. Ah, uh, there is tendency in the nexus, but that shit doesn't matter. Let's have a look at these bloodstains. I think I know what they're from. Okay, no I don't. The fuck happened here? Did you get fucking poisoned? What the hell happened to you, dude? Hmm. Alright, well, that's weird. Meet Thomas. I'm stockpile Thomas. When the scourge came, I didn't know what hit me. When I came to, I found myself here, in the Nexus. My wife and daughter fell victim to the demons. But I would be worthless in battle. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. I would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage. Okay. So. One thing we'll talk about right now, because it's probably the best time to talk about it. You will notice next to every item, there is this number. These are decimal points. Nothing here, nothing here. Weapons also have numbers. We'll chuck a mailbreaker, we don't need that. Armor has big numbers. As you will see, putting it way shit lowers my item burden. This is how the game balances healing. Um, best of sorry Thomas, I probably should have let you speak there. There is so much fucking shit to go on about in this game. So, no I can't do it right now, damn it. If we go to the character shit. Alright, here we go. Equip is what you think, it's the same thing as in all, all Souls games. Um, endurance bumps up the amount of shit you can carry on your person equipped to you. Item burden is everything you carry in your inventory. So, this creates situations where, um, if you're going into a new world, you want to have as an, an item burden as low as possible. Because this game has some weird shit that they kind of got rid of in the other Souls games, where if you pick up an item, and you can't carry it, um, fix your inventory or it's fucking gone. So that's fun. So you better work out that shit real quick. You better work out what you want to keep and want to get rid of. This applies notably to a big ass shield and a big ass set of armor. So this in theory is meant to balance your healing and what consumables you take in with you. But when you know the game well enough, it kind of doesn't matter, and it's just a hindrance. I get what they were going for, and I kind of like it, but it's, it's so much more streamlined in the other games. If they changed up how it worked a bit, I don't know how, but if they changed it a bit, I'd be cool with it in Elden Ring, depending on how the game, like, the scope of the game. If it's as open world as it sounds, uh, might be a bit, a bit annoying. But I wouldn't be totally opposed to it. But here, it's quaint, I guess, is the best way to phrase Yeah, it's the best way to phrase it. Fuck it. So Thomas is a cool guy. Um, don't kill him. Don't piss him off. No, seriously, don't vote or you lose him for the whole fucking game. And you will have to actively lose items. Over here, we are Baldwin. Mm. You new here? Do you hear for my services? The name's Baldwin, just an ordinary blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons, or forge ones you already have. With your souls, 
I can eke out a living. And with my weapons, you can go on living. Not a bad deal, huh? It's a pretty solid deal. So this is Proto Andre over here. Alright. So, we need hard soap for this ship. I will go into the item upgrades when we get there. Repairing, because well, souls. And we're back to Dark Souls 1 kind of shit. So, there is a cool glitch I will have to show off later, and I didn't look it up before this recording, so boy, that was clever. Using Baldwin and Thomas, on this menu when you go to purchase this, if you walk over here, you'll notice his dialogue box closed, but we didn't close it. If we have what if we have the item the next seal binding, which we got when we spawned here, which is just the dark sign from Dark Souls, um we can activate it and have it go talk to Thomas and when we put an item in his inventory, if we mash hard enough, we can dupe the item and cancel the animation, meaning we don't lose all our all our souls. So it's pretty handy. I will be using that for the purposes of weapon variety and showing off everything every boss soul can make. I'm not going to use it so I have like a plus 10... Wait, what am I saying? Plus 10. Is that how this works in this game? It's, it's some weird numbers. This upgrade tree is fucking convoluted, I'll tell you that much. Um, I won't use it to have like an overpowered weapon early. I'll do it so I can show off a variety. So down here... We have some shit. We have all these little uh, tutorial messages. Most of this is what I've just explained. So, yeah. It's all pretty standard soul stuff. I mean, if you if you watch me play Bloodborne, uh, yep, and some people put messages down here, I would rate it, but I can't. If you watch me play Bloodborne, you know a lot of this shit. If you played Souls, you know all of this shit. Uh, well, assuming you've actually beaten them. Like, look, there's nothing really interesting here. I've explained most of this shit. I kind of figured it was better to explain it while talking to people. Rather than stand there and go, Well, when we're talking about stamina, well, when you uh, lose stamina like so, if you try to block, if you try to raise your shield, you'll see your stamina um, built up slowly. As opposed to uh, holding your shield... Well, not holding shield up. Um, that is a technique known as drop your fucking shield, Wooly. That's an old one, but yeah. <laughs> I had to get it in once. Oh, hey girl. Oh my. How has this happened? You tell me. Has God abandoned us for failing to show proper respect to King Alant? Oh, Mbasa. Two things. I don't want to sound like the fucking Omicron FAQ while I'm talking about this. Ah, oh, come on, dude. Come on. Yeah, there's a lot of those messages. So you'll notice two things. Also, we can't go there. That's clever. Um, she mentioned God. Yep. No abstract kind of shit like in Dark Souls. No, it's God. It's just straight up God. And the second is the word Umbasa. Ah, oh, bloodstains. Wonder what happened there. Hmm. Curious. One of two things, I fucking bet. I think I know which one it was. Yeah, there we go. Yeah? Yeah? So that's what you do when you beat a boss. You fucking jump so you don't fuck up your tendency. Yeah, basically. Um, second of the things she said. Umbasa. So that's the thing Gascoin said. Sorry, Gasquang said. Um, in, pro in the beta earlier versions of Bloodborne, when it was basically fucking Demon Souls. Um... It's just that abstract praying to God kind of thing. We can't go up there. Hmm, that's lame. Oh well. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, that's uh, that's that so far. Let's drop here. Hmm. Exploration in the hub. You don't say. There is indeed treasure ahead. It's pretty safe to run across this stuff. New moon grass. That's some good shit. We'll look at that in a second. You can fucking plunging attack Baldwin. Except for the part where... Oh, by the way, I'm holding R1. There are no plunging attacks. 
Not in this fucking game. So, uh, yeah, have fun with that knowledge. Boy, this is 51 minutes, um, including the sync test at the start. I don't know how I'm cutting this first part up. I'm probably going to cut it up when I die to Vanguard and have this in the Vanguard. Me beating Vanguard after. Vanguard, not Vengal. Vengal's fucking rad. Oh. Uh, oh well. Here we go. So that was New Moon. Is this also New Moon or is it Ephemeral Wise? Renowned Soldier's Soul. Cool. Alrighty, here we go. So, this is the Nexus. That's a cool fucking statue, isn't it? Had to make a quick cut, had a brief interruption, sorry. This thing here, I don't know what the fuck it's meant to be, but it looks cool. Um, I didn't mention it when we were looking at the intro because I was being quiet. You'll have, me you'll have noticed them mentioning the old one. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's where the Bloodborne shit starts. Um, this game is secretly Lovecraft. Just not as overt as Bloodborne becomes. These seals are fucking rad too. Ah, uh, this statue, like, has no function. It's cool though. Reminds me of Velka. The goddess of sin. Or best girl, Koalana, either way. Anyway. Now it's about the magical point I figure I will cut before I warp to... Well, now nah, fuck it, I'll show these off first. So, if we touch this, it'll bring up the warp menu. In this game, you have worlds you can go to. So, the first one will give us our menu of where to go. Second, um, all these, no dice. Yeah, so this is the one that got destroyed. This is the one people want to have back in the, um, in the remake. But if you, if you played, uh, Crown of the Ivory King, well, I think you've played it. You've basically played its spiritual successor. That's a Dark Souls 2 DLC. Alright. So we'll go through all of these later, if I just wanted to demonstrate. This over here is the one. Everyone should go here. Alright. I'm going to make my cut here, and then we will be loading into Boletarian Paris. A uh, palace. <laughs> yeah, Boletarian <laughs> Paris, why the fuck not? Alrighty. I imagine this is already the first two episodes, and this is fucking talking about whatever the hell, so I apologize. We will get to actually doing levels in the next part.
Ah, we did it. Cool. So, on the off chance that will this LP's even fucking going ahead, I will, I'll, and you know, assuming I lost the Vanguard, I'm going to include this. So I beat him. That's nice. Yeah, 498 souls. What did you expect? Anyway, here's our reward. Um, in case I didn't, um... Well, in case I didn't mention this, I beat him already. Um, I have in this session, but you guys probably aren't hearing that. I beat him earlier this morning, playing as the Temple Knight. I, then I tried him as a soldier, and I fucking failed hard. So, we are going to our reward for beating Vanguard. Again, um, you're not seeing this if I beat him properly. Um, so I'm playing as a knight on this playthrough. So, that's not, uh, that's not too bad. I think knights... I don't know if knights what I'm going for in the proper playthrough, you guys would have obviously seen that. But on the other hand, here we are. So here's your rewards. They are as follows. Hardstone. On top of that, there is some sharp stone. And there are three renowned soldiers souls. Now, I was saying this earlier today on the recording you guys won't see because fuck desync. Um, you will notice he has got his fist cocked and ready. Because unlike normal dragons, the dragon god over here um, subscribes to a different school. The school of the falcon punch. So you know there's that. So that's, <laughs> that's your reward. You beat Vanguard? Fuck you. <laughs>